All right, greetings, Stars fans. Hope everyone had a good holiday. This is the Two Brothers Miked Up show minus one brother, and we've picked up one father. So, as always, we sit down, we play a little game of NHL after every game, give you our feelings about what just happened in the previous game. The Stars played the St. Louis Blues in game 36. Stars lose three to two in the shootout. As always, we go into the previous video with our predictions. Quinn had a score of 3 to 2 if the Stars were going to win. He had a score of 4 to 1 if the Blues were going to win. I on the other hand, I liked a score of 3 to 1 for either team. Now, granted, we didn't hit on those predictions, but it was still a close game nonetheless, as we pretty much said we were going to do. Now, Niemi gets the start over Kari Lettinen. I would have liked to have seen Kari getting this start, as I said in the previous video. It just it just seemed like it would be a better opportunity for Kari to get you know his faculties right, to get his mind right. You know, I, I figured the holiday break would bring you know maybe a little more pep into his game. I, I think I would have liked to have seen in this game over Niemi because I think Niemi is not getting really overused but he is getting a lot of the games um, what did you think about Niemi getting the start over Kari well personally I like the the choice of Niemi getting the start um, I think Kari needed to get his start his next start at home um, I don't think with the the way the Dallas played St. Louis the last time they played, they really got outplayed. So I didn't want to see Kari go in and have a bad game against a high powered offense like St. Louis. So that's why I would have started Niemi over Kari and let Kari get back to the start at home so we can have the confidence of being at home instead of on the road. So you feel as if that he you feel as if Kari could probably get a boost more from the home crowd than you would on the road which I mean I think there isn't don't you think there's a little more added pressure though being at home though well there's there's added pressure but the way that he played his last game and the way Niemi came in and mopped up for him I think you just have to especially you're wanting to get to start your your post holiday break with a a good overall game and I think Niemi was going to give him that game more than Kari. I think you have to start off your post Christmas break with a strong showing especially against a, a division opponent. Now the about nine minutes into the first period we don't really see a lot of action. Take what you saw from the first ten minutes of the first period uh, give me what you liked and what you didn't like about how the Stars played in this uh, in this game. Well, I think you could tell both teams had a post-holiday um, kind of a blues type feel to it. It was uh, real ragged. Passes weren't connecting. Uh, scoring chances weren't weren't connecting. The only thing that really kept them in the game was a couple of good saves by both Allen and the Emmy. Um, I just think the Stars, they they weathered the first 10 minutes of the game, which was good for them. If St. Louis would have came out and scored an early goal, I think Dallas would have been in a deep, deep hole. Yeah, I, I definitely agree. The, the pace to the game, how it started, wasn't exactly how I figured it was going to because, you know, you get that long break, and then I guess sometimes that really works against you because – like we saw earlier in the season when the Stars had like a four-day four day break, the next game they didn't really have a lot of pep in their step from the beginning. But ultimately we see the Stars, you know, start getting the train moving up the tracks towards the middle of the first period. But we see a lot of what St. Louis brings to their games. We saw this in the last game is that what St. Louis is doing is they're putting a lot of pressure. They're not allowing a lot of gap space between the Stars players and the St. Louis Blues players. And that's pretty much standard Hitchcock coaching with how he likes to control his players. 
And with St. Louis really being the bigger team physically, I mean, we can tell that, I mean, the hits in the game were varied in uh, size and physicality. I mean, the Stars got out hit 28 to 15. I mean, when you go up against a team like St. Louis, how, how do you feel the Stars really react to this type of pressure that we see? Well, I think the Stars, when you're playing against a more physical team, the Stars have to concentrate on getting quick passes, crisp passes, getting out of the zones really, really quick, knowing what a player is coming up on you when you're up against the boards, um, protecting yourself. Uh, as you could tell last night, they definitely were kind of targeting John Klingberg just for the simple fact that you know Klingberg's size is not um, your typical big defenseman. So I think they were trying to put their bodies on him a lot, trying to get him off his game. And you could tell it was kind of rattling the stars a little bit by St. Louis's physicality. Now let's let's talk about uh, Klingberg. Now in a game like this, wouldn't it make more sense to have maybe Oleksiak on the back end? I mean, granted, Klingberg is on the top pair, and as of right now, he's... Me and Quinn happen to think he might be in a little sophomore slump right now, but wouldn't it make more sense to bring in an Oleksiak or a Nimeth into this particular game? Something that you would need a bigger body against bigger bodies. Well, I don't think you you start off your second half of your season after the holiday break by, by changing anything that major. I mean, I think Alexiak, I would probably would have played him instead of Yoki Paka, simple for the fact because of the size, because of the size of uh, the Blues defensemen and a couple of their uh, real physical offensemen. Um, I think Alexiak might have brought a little bit more of a presence uh, that if they took... Um, liberties with any of the Stars players that he could have jumped in and uh, did something about it. Um, but as far as, you know, Klingberg, I think the way the Stars are going right now, you don't really switch up anything. Even though he's been in a slump the past couple of games, you know, you just have to hope that he's going to get out of it. Um, he has played an enormous amount of games over the past two seasons, which he was not uh, really used to. He may, his body may be breaking down a little bit. He may be tiring, but I think you just have to go with what's brought you here. Now, let's, let's go into the second period. Now, the Blues bring that same pressure, but it looks like Dallas is not reacting to it the way in the first period. In the first period, I thought they were reacting to it quite well, but in the second period it looked like the stars were kind of going back on their onto their hills but it this turns into a kind of not a preferred method i think for the stars because i think they would like to you know have the all out offense but it seems like when the stars are starting to see this type of pressure cuz we've seen it against like minnesota and uh, other teams like that is that whenever they start getting that pressure the stars kind of hold back to see if they can weather that storm but what that also does, does is that resulted in the Stars not get, even getting a shot until 8 minutes and like 15 seconds into the second period. But that's also off, I mean that's after Steen gets a power play goal from Yanmark with I think was a very weak penalty. But when you see the Stars, you know, not really turtle, but they try to weather that storm. I, how do you think they should really over how do you think they should react whenever you see them going back shouldn't you think that they should you know keep their pressure up and onto the St. Louis cuz the the strength of the stars is their skating and whenever St. Louis brings all that pressure you would think that the stars would be able to maybe outskate them because we saw with Alex Goligoski and Ryan Reeves he was able to outskate Ryan Reeves and give that uh pass uh, up to Sagan for the Stars' second goal. How do you think... Shouldn't you think that the Stars should use their speed? 
the stars always when they're playing physical opponents um, power opponents stars games always have ebb and flows they have to survive the uh, the ebbs of the game um, as they saw last night in the second period when st. Louis com almost completely dominated the entire period and Dallas survived it and came away with you know the first goal and that's how Dallas has to play uh, when they're when you just feel the the momentum of the game Dallas has a tendency to hold on in certain periods and they hold on just enough when you think that the other team is going to take control of the game Dallas will come up with that one goal that can kind of break the momentum of a team, and that's what they did last night. St. Louis had dominated the entire second period, and Dallas got that one, granted, fluky goal. I think Allen would have really liked to have had that goal back from um, Sevier, but um, once they survived that, you could see it kind of changed the complex of the entire game where St. Louis was backing up a little bit, and Dallas kind of took control a little bit of the momentum of the game and the pace of the game after that goal. Yeah, you could definitely see the momentum shift uh, after the Sevier goal because, it, like you said, it, it was a bit of a fluky goal. But granted, you know, you it was a skilled player's uh, goal picking the spot that he did. But you could definitely see that. Um, well, I don't know if I'd call Sevier a skilled player. Well, no, but uh, that's what skilled players will uh, shoot for because we see that from Spezza a lot from uh, on short side angles. But. The St. Louis had been throwing jabs all day and all night. And then, you know, Dallas counter punches with the uppercut to the chin. And it really does daze St. Louis a bit. Like, and that puts them back on the hills. And that's, and that's why I think, why not, you know, use that speed that the Dallas Stars have built through uh, positioning and through offseason uh, acquisitions. The strength of this team has to be on possession alone. And whenever the St. Louis Blues bring all that pressure, they need to be able to use their feet a little bit better to get out of that pressure. Granted, it's not always that simple. You know, other variables have to come into play with it as well. And you have to get a little puck luck. But it just seems like they kind of stop skating a bit whenever um, they get that type of pressure. But so we see Steen score on the power play. How do you like Dallas's uh, penalty kill so far of the season? Well, I think their, their penalty kill um, has gotten better. Um, I think at times they tend to run around a bit. Um, they have a hard time clearing the puck a lot of times. Um, they they just tend to kind of back up when they should be kind of uh, more attacking the, um, the player that's shooting. They seemed to, the last like in last night's game, they left the the middle of the ice open a lot, and it's 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 by pure miracle that Tarasenko didn't at least have two or three goals in that one period. He was wide open and had multiple multiple shots where he was just there by himself. He just missed the net. A couple of times, and one hit hit Niami right in the mask. So I think they were fortunate uh, getting out of that period um, the way they did. And like I said, they they weathered the storm. And um, even though their penalty killing allowed that one uh, goal, um, they tend they came back and did a little bit better on the other penalty kills. Yeah, the the Dallas Stars penalty kill has been very up and down I mean we just got through a stretch to where to be honest with you it it looked like they weren't going to kill a penalty to save their lives but now they're getting back into a little bit more positional play I think they're getting back to basics when it comes to it but um, yeah last night on that uh, goal now on that uh, Going into the next topic, on Steen's goal, who do you really put the blame on for that? Is it is it the positioning from the forward not getting pressure, or did Niemi just miss it? I think it was a combination of both. I, I don't think um, Niemi really played it 
as well as you should have. But uh, Dallas's forwards, to me, have been the weak link on their their penalty kill. They I don't know. They just tend to lose people. Um, like I said, that's that center of the ice. There is seems to be open every every game. Um, but I think um, their uh, Niemi kind of. Yeah, I don't know if he took his eye off of it, but uh, he just seemed to have not played it as well as he should have. But um, the the penalty kill, on a whole, I think is is average at best, and I think that that's you know they're, they're, it's just that's what it is. It's just an average penalty kill, and um, they have games where they can kill all five. Other games, they just don't look good at all. It's just. Like that, it's like their team. It, it ebbs and flows. Moving into the third period, we we see the stars going into the third with the lead, and they're actually playing pretty well. I mean, St. Louis really isn't getting a lot of chances. I mean, the chances that are they are getting are actually really good. But we we see the stars really trying to play that smart hockey. I would have liked a little more attack from them on that third period but then a minute and 50 seconds left you know we we know the blues aren't going to go away so it's it makes i'm not surprised that you know they got that goal with a minute 50 left that you mean that's the prime example of what you were saying is that they're leaving the center just open all day and you know fabry comes in he he gets his goal and we go into overtime going into overtime I thought it was very back and forth we had that one great chance from Spezza and then uh, that passes it over to Sharp but all around how'd you like the overtime I I thought the overtime was was great 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 viewing Um, it was great for uh, anyone watching Um, those are the kind of um, overtime periods where uh, the league well, that's what they want. I mean, up and back, up and back. Um, each team had a prime scoring opportunity with Dallas, you know, had the best one. I mean, it was just a fantastic play by the St. Louis player to stop that goal from Sharp from going in. Yeah, I think that was Shattenkirk. But it was, you know, it was an amazing play. You know, you just have to give them, you know, cred for that. And But I think they... They both, you know, took each other's punch, and you know that each of them had a prime scoring opportunity. Um, they got out of the overtime, and um, it was up to the shootout. Speaking of the shootouts, um, let's. This is the lineup that the Stars sent out for their shootout: Sagan, Ben, Sharp, Sevier, Spezza, Klingberg, Eves, Jordy, Ben. And Fiddler. <clears throat> now I know that in practice the stars. I know I've, they've said that towards the end of the practice they always practice the shootout because they always need to know who's going to have the better hand at it. Out of this lineup, I know when we were watching the game yesterday, we kind of said after Sharp went and Sevier went out there, we kind of said, really. I mean, we know we know he's scored in back-to-back games, but I mean, out of this lineup, who would have you rather had seen go in these spots? I mean, Sagan, Ben, Sharp, of course. Well, to me, that's that's where Dallas lost the game, and I think it was uh, more coaching than anything else. I think um, Ruff or, or whoever made the decision of the the shooters. Uh, made a very very bad um, call on letting Sevier go out there. Um, Dallas had two opportunities to win it. Um, the first opportunity um, was whenever they put Sevier out there. You've got to put Spezza out there. Um, yeah, why he thought Sevier? You know, you go with your 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 big time performer. And Spezza was the last one on the bench that had been through situations like this before. Um, he is, you know, one of your experienced players. He is a, one of your exciting players. And why Ruff bypassed him 
when you're going for the win. I mean, if it would have been, you know, to go for the tie or it's, you know, every, everybody is missing, then yeah, I can see Seager going out there. But when you have that one opportunity to put the game away, you have to go with Spezza and not Seager. Yeah, I, I didn't like the inclusion of Klingberg. Yeah, I mean, he hasn't proved to be a one-on-one -on -one type of player. Yes, he can make fancy, you know, moves at the blue line, but it, it just didn't seem like the shootout was for him. I mean, I know we've seen uh, Jordy Ben uh, make one move and score one goal, but, I mean, why not put Hemsky? Why not Yanmark? Why not Nachushkin? These are the players. These are the forwards of your team. They're the ones that are expected to make these goals. And I just didn't understand a lot of the inclusions. I mean, the Patrick Eves one, I was pleasantly surprised, you know, because I had said, Patrick Eves, really? He surprised me. Granted, there, there should always be that one wild card, but when you throw out a, four wild cards into the mix of the shootout, yeah, that's, I think Dallas got out coached on that one. And, and like you said, let's go into the goaltending. You've always said going into the shootout that you would have liked to have had Kari in there. Granted, Kari would have gone in cold, but you think Kari might be a better one-on-one -on -one goalie. I mean, I, I just think that the past times that we've seen Niami um, in shootouts, uh, granted, uh, the, the, the last one we saw when they were on a back-to-back -back and he had went in for Kari the, the game before, he may have just been tired. But, you know, he let all three goals in and looked bad on all three shootout goals. This one here, first two guys made him look bad. And I just, you know, I just don't have the confidence in him. If I'm, if I'm going into overtime with the team, I would, you know, I would just have Kari go in and do his, you know, his warm-ups and whatnot and, you know, behind the bench or down the hallway, have him stretch, do all this kind of things. And, you know, I would put Kari in as the shootout. Just see what happens. Because I think Kari is a better one-on-one -on -one type goalie. I think he has more of, a, of, an, of an instinct on the way a player is going to shoot. I, I think Niemi, Niemi guesses too much, I think. But I think Kari it tends to have more of an instinct of um, how a player is going to shoot. I mean, it's an, it's an interesting proposition. I mean, you don't ever... You barely, hardly ever see it in the NHL, but the past, you know, two or three games with Niemi in the shootout, and you've seen how bad he's looked. I mean, I, I think you just give it a shot and see what happens. Now, we are 36 games into the season. Who's the Stars' number one goalie? Well, I think you have to say Niemi is um, simple, simply for the fact that you know he, he tends to have a calming influence back there, Kari. You know, he's, uh, for some reason, the past two seasons, once he gives up a goal, he, he just seemed to have um, a nervousness about him. You know, he, he's like, he lacks his confidence. And, um, you know, whether that's, you know, something going on in his head, I don't know, knowing the fact that, you know, there is another, you know, quote-unquote number one goalie behind him, that if he doesn't do good, he's going to get pulled. You know, if you had, a, say, like a Jack Campbell or, you know, more of a rookie type backup, you know, the coaches would tend more to just stick with Kari and see what happens. But when you have another number one goalie uh, behind him, I think it's quick um, to pull him because you're still in the game and your offense can score a lot of goals in a short amount of time. Yeah, um, going off of that, um, Niemi has played in 24 games. All right, but he's only started 21. Now, Kari has only played in 16 games, but he's started in 15, which means that Kari has been pulled more times. Kari has looked not prepared as much as Niemi. Niemi's only been pulled once, Kari uh, three times. <clears throat> now, the goals against average for Niemi is 2.39. Kari is 2.66. Granted, that's way better than last season, as horrible as he was last season. But career goals against and save percentage, it's Niemi 2.28, save percentage 
917. Kari has a career. Um, oh, no, no, wait. Uh, Niemi has a 2.39 with a 916 career. And Kari has a 2.7 with a 913 career. Now, it Kari has, going and looking at his stats, he's been on the steady decline since the 2011-2012 season. Um, but he's also played a lot more than Niemi has had to. As of right now, I would say that Niemi is the clear-cut uh, number one. And he, as of right now, he's proven that he should get the bulk of the games. I don't think it's a discussion anymore with the coaching staff thinking, man, maybe we'll go with Kari, maybe we'll go with Niemi. It should be, it. it's Niemi's job to lose now. But, I mean, if Kari comes in tonight, because Ruff said, you know, there's a possibility that Niemi could play in this game. If Kari comes in and shuts down St. Louis, maybe ride him out. But as of right now, I don't think Kari's mind is right that's why I would have liked him better in St. Louis without the pressure. Because if you put him in home in front of the home crowd and he lays another stinker, I think that's just going to wipe any kind of confidence that he might have gotten. But let's let's go into the ratings of this game. What would you have rated on a scale of A to F? What would you have rated this game? Um, I, I'd have given it a B, possibly a B plus, simply for the fact that you have two of the powerhouse teams in the Central Division. Um, you know, and granted, it maybe not have been the you know the best game at at the beginning because I think they were both still trying to get over the Christmas break. But I think you had two of the powerhouses kind of just going at one another. Um, I think it really settled down in the late second early into the third period. I think you and I think you saw, you know, a possible matchup in the playoffs coming up. Yeah, uh I was teetering on a B B minus, but ultimately I came down to a C plus only because of the weary start. You know, the Stars didn't have the legs to get around uh St. Louis's pressure. They again, you know, almost let the goalie still the game for St. Louis because the chances that they were getting weren't really all that great. Um, I mean, they showed signs. That's why they got the the C plus instead of the C of getting back into this game. They were holding the lead, but then ultimately that defensive breakdown in the center and then getting out coached in the shootout. You know, those those choices. I just I can't support the choices that they did. I gave a C plus. I mean, it's still passing. But I mean, it was it was a decent game. But ultimately, this was they they had this game, but then they just let it slip away. Let's go into predictions for the St. Louis game in Game Thirty Seven. What scores are you thinking out of that one? Well, tonight's game, I'm I'm thinking Dallas will come out with the win, and I'm looking at a uh, four to one victory for Dallas. I think um, St. Louis is going to go with their backup goalie, and I think Dallas, after last night, will come out with something to prove. Um, but if they lose, I think it's going to be like a 3-2 to two win by St. Louis. But um, all indications, I mean, I would think that Dallas is going to um, come back and kind of really take it to them tonight. So, kind of like you're thinking maybe it's a close game, not really a shootout. Well, I I, I don't know if it's going to be a close game. Uh, like I said, if, if I think if Dallas wins, I think it's going to be a handle, handily won game. Mm-hmm. I, I think St. Louis, um, if if Dallas can get the quick lead, um, at least like a two to nothing lead, I think St. Louis um, will kind of shut down, and I think mm-hmm. Dallas will just add it on. And like I said, I predicting them to win four to one. Mm-hmm. Now, for my predictions, if Dallas is to come on top, it's because it's a back-to-back. Kari comes in and stands on his head and shows what brilliance Kari can really bring to this team. 
I like a score of five to two for Dallas, only because it's a back to back. There should be weary legs, but on a that we saw from a back to back from the Minnesota game to the Chicago game, Dallas had spunk in their game, and this is a game that they need to to take. And I was actually thinking that three out of a possible four points from St. Louis would be a great weekend. I like a score of five to two for Dallas. I hope they come out just shooting the lights out, but. I also like a score for St. Louis of 4-1. to one. I don't think it's a close game either way because one team is probably going to be tired. And whoever shows that and whoever's goalie doesn't show up, that's going to be the game. And just like that, that's the discussion. Be sure to subscribe, share, like, you know, give any kind of feedback. Help turn this into something that you want to listen to all the time show friends remember this is a show for fans by fans and as always tune in next time